Good morning. Good morning. It is a joy to be together this morning as God gathers us into his house for worship this morning and brings us his great gifts of life and forgiveness through his word. Welcome to any guests and visitors here this morning. Our worship will direct us towards our gospel reading this morning where we encounter a Canaanite woman encountering Jesus, but he goes into her territory, into her land, and seeks her in an unusual way. Uh, this morning we'll be focusing around this idea of God's great reversal in our lives when he brings us things we don't expect. Uh, so, uh, there are no announcements uh, for worship this morning regarding the service itself. Uh, so let's join together in singing our opening hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered together to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive God's fellowship with us through our Lord Jesus Christ, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. So together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Upon this of your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing together.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We give thanks and praise to you, O God, for making your house a place of prayer for all peoples. You have blessed us with your grace and salvation. Through the gospel, make us voices of invitation to all people that with us they may serve you with joy and gladness all our days. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for uh, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost comes from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 and verses 6 through 8. And here we see that God prophesies through uh, the prophet Isaiah that one day the Lord will welcome all nations to himself and make his house a place of prayer for them as well. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have a chance to speak Psalm 67 responsively. May God be gracious to us and bless us. That your way may be known to the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Our epistle lesson today is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, 13 to 15, and 28 to 32. God will reveal his mercy to all people. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he, knew, whom he foreknew. I am taking you to Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in, hope, in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some for them, of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies in your account, but as far as election is concerned, they are loved on the account of the patriarchs, for God's gifts and, and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may... Have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and 
if you are able, out of reverence for the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. We sing together. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon oppression. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. And he replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, O Christ. You You may remain standing as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now you may be seated. And at this time, the children are welcome to come forward for a children's message. Come on up, everybody. Hi, Cora. Hi, Aaliyah. Good to see you all here. <clears throat> oh, you're going to sit there. All righty. All righty. Say, we've got Jesus back here today. <clears throat> we've talked about him a little bit about him last week. Um, and I, I, I need you to imagine something for a moment. Sometimes we talk about animals up here, but I, I want to ask you something. If, if you could be any animal, what would you want to be? Raise your hand. I want to know what animal you would want to be if you could be any animal. What animal would you want to be? Um, I want to be a horse. A horse? Nice. What about you, Aaliyah? Um, 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 a, sheep. a sheep. Nice. I just want to be a sheep. That's great. What, what animal would you want to be? A cat. Awesome. Yeah, there's so many cool animals that we think are are awesome and special. But today, in the gospel reading, the reading that we just read when we were all standing up, Jesus, he mentions, Jesus mentions an animal. Do you know what animal you heard Jesus talk about in our reading? What animal did Jesus talk about in our reading? Do you remember? He did not talk about a sheep, but good guess. Do you remember? No? Okay. It wasn't a demon. Demons aren't animals either. It was, it was an animal that sometimes people have as pets. It wasn't a cat. What was that? No, but good guess. 
It was a dog. Yeah, Jesus actually calls a person a dog. Does that sound nice or not nice? Don't know? Yeah, Jesus actually wasn't calling her a dog to be mean, but that's what people would call this woman because she wasn't like other people. And Jesus was calling her a a dog in a sense for her to realize something that she didn't really know. You know, boys and girls, Jesus, though, calls us something different. He doesn't call us animals. He doesn't call us animals. Jesus calls us. Do you know what Jesus calls us, Cora? He calls us children of God. So I need your help saying something. Can you help me say something? Repeat after me. Say, I'm a child child of God. And then I need you to repeat one more thing after me. Say, Jesus calls me by name. Jesus calls each of you by name, not by an animal, not by anything else, but he calls you by name because in your baptisms, Jesus made you his own and he loves you very much. So one of you are going to get to take Jesus home with, with you, and I've got a sheet for you to give you some directions on what you can do with Jesus when you take him home. But first, we're going to sit down over here and pray together. And if you're in the pews, you can pray along with us too. So fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you you for calling us by name name and loving us us even when when we didn't act nicely. nicely. Help us us to live as your people people. and love others others. as you love us. us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Aaliyah, would you like to take Jesus home with you for the next month? And you take this, you take this sheet with you. And boys and girls, you can head back to your seats. And congregation, we will continue by singing our hymn of the day, We All Are One in Mission. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Uh, this isn't the first time that Jesus has been approached with a case of demon possession. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 to 34, and Matthew chapter 9, verse 32. All of these three situations consisted of Jesus having someone come to him because they have a demon. Or they had someone bring them to Jesus because they had a demon or demons. And while it may be a surprise to you and to me in our day and age in scientific relativism where we imagine that encountering a demon is something more like magic and a fairy tale, Jesus treats and rids those suffering of the demon and demons that have possessed them because sin creates a door for demon possession. And so it is no surprise to Jesus. For a moment, I want you to open up your Bibles in your pews in front of you and go to page uh, 972 and 973. You'll find Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, our gospel reading for today. <clears throat> and because this demon possession is no surprise to Jesus in his life, because he assumes that it happens because sin is in the world, and yet we think of it as the only surprising thing, you'll begin to find that there is much more to surprise and startle us in the midst of this reading. The first surprise, when you look at verse 21 on page 972 or 973, <clears throat> in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 15, may not be much of a surprise at all. In fact, it may even go unnoticed. It says that Jesus departed from this area and then went to another land, the region of Tyre and Sidon. This would be like crossing the border over into an unknown land. Jesus would not be welcome there because of their great religious and cultural differences. He's not in his own territory. So that's why, first off, Jesus is not surprised at the fact that someone comes to him with someone that is demon-possessed. But then in verse 22, we get another surprise. In fact, Matthew gives us a, a hint at the word. I believe it's in our, our gospel reading in, in verse 22. Actually, it doesn't say it there. <clears throat> yours. Does yours have the word behold? Someone give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if it does. It doesn't. If you've got a different translation, raise your hand if it's got the word behold. Does anyone else have a different translation? No. The word should be behold there. That word should grab your attention. You can go look at it in different translations in the ESV or in the NASB, the NLT. It's there. Behold, a Canaanite woman came up to him crying out supposed to grab your attention and bring you in. But the odd thing is that Jesus in a foreign land has someone who's native to that land come up and talk to him. And not just talk to him, but talk in a way that is completely foreign to her. Look at what she says to Jesus. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. The God that Jesus worships is not the same God that she has. They're different, and yet she calls out to Jesus, acknowledging him in Jewish terms, things that she would never imagine doing and her friends would look down on her for doing. And she calls to the Messiah, why would an unbeliever call on Jesus as a Messiah? And not only that, why would she acknowledge to him that her daughter is demon-possessed? Jesus expects nothing less, though, 
Which is why I am shocked at Jesus' response in verse 23. (laughs) In fact, he doesn't even say anything. All it says is, but Jesus did not answer a word. (laughs) At this point, I would not be surprised if you would be desiring some form of mercy for this woman who is constantly calling out to Jesus for mercy and help. I mean, what one of us would not see someone on the side of the road calling out for help and seek to help them? We would expect no less from Jesus as we've come to know him in his mercy and grace in our lives. For we've all had experiences where it seems as though God is not answering us a word at all. As we fight through years of stress with a son or a daughter who seems to be struggling in the faith, and you wonder if God or Satan has more of a foothold in their life. We've wondered if God is going to answer us a word at all as we sit there and think about how our spouse spoke before us and before many witnesses in God's house that they would remain committed and love you for better or for worse. And yet now, because of either anger or apathy, seem to not care for you at all and would much rather make better out of your worse. And you are left alone in your prayers waiting for God to answer. Many of us desire to have friends, good friends, fill our lives, not just outside of the church, but here in church. And yet when you look around, it seems as though there are not many who are your age at all or who will befriend you even if they're not your age. Your friends may never come, and you may never find the friends here that you hope for as you wait for an answer from God. Much like this woman and her daughter need help from Jesus, it does not seem fair that God would make us wait for an answer. Things only get worse for this woman who is pleading with Jesus. Not only has Jesus ignored her request, but if you go on to look at what happens in the coming verses in 24 and 25, now the disciples join in on it. And they try and shoo her away as if she's some problem too small for Jesus to handle. And ask Jesus, followers of Jesus, his people, God's nation Israel, ask a prayer of him. Send her away, for she bothers us. And it seems as if Jesus wants to send her away as well. He, again, for a second time, does not even acknowledge this woman, except her status in relationship to Israel. But in doing so, Jesus opens a door. And she notices that door being opened to her. Jesus says to his puffed up and arrogant disciples, I was only sent for the house of Israel, the lost sheep. And that's when this woman realizes that there is not much separating her and the disciples at all. That's when she can see that this is Jesus' way of defending her, as odd and surprising as it might be to you and to me. And so she shocks all of the disciples. She all of a sudden goes from far off to running straight up in front of Jesus and she falls down on her face, gets on her knees, and begins to worship Jesus, saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Help me. 
that's pretty surprising that this woman, as Jesus is in her land, in her place, in her house, Jesus has come there, and now all of a sudden, the gods that she worshipped beforehand are cast aside, and Jesus has her attention and worship. There's no way that an outsider should be welcomed into God's family and worship him. And Jesus' response is no less surprising than hers as she sees that gospel door opening to her. Jesus and his response is no less surprising to us, the disciples, and the woman. For Jesus says it's not right to take what is the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. It amazes me that at this point, she realizes the opportunity for the door is blown wide open. She doesn't do as we would do in our hearing when Jesus recognizes where we are at in our sin. She doesn't get offended. Instead, she sees it as Jesus joyfully surprising her with his words because in her words, in her hearing of the gospel, that means that because she is a dog, she at least she is in the master's house and at his table. She can at least eat crumbs from this table. She realizes that Jesus, not only can he heal her daughter, but he can also change her life from being completely exiled and outside of God's mercy and his grace as that's what the Jewish nation stood for in her eyes, and now she can go from being a dog to being a child at the table. Jesus is always willing to surprise the undeserving. I'm sure that you could think of someone in your life who you have brought on your heart and in your mind here today that you want to bring before Jesus in prayer. And you've probably brought that person in your hearts and in your mind to God in prayer many times. You've probably brought that person in conversations with believers and non-believers about what to do about them and their relationship to God. That's what this Canaanite woman sought in the first place. But there's something else surprising that you might find in the reading. She says, Lord, help me. Her care and her love for her daughter are synonymous with her relationship to God. And so she asked God to help her. Have you ever thought about taking the approach of the Canaanite woman? (laughs) Maybe not. But it begins with calling out to God. And it may result in not hearing an answer from God, but it is a call from God nonetheless to come to bow down before God in worship towards Jesus, to call out to him, not just help for the person that is on your heart and on your mind, for your spouse, your family, or your friend, but to call out to him for yourself. Which may be a surprise to you. That in light of caring for those around you, And the fact that you know that God loves them and died for them in Jesus Christ on the cross, that he rose from the dead so that they could have a new life, that God wants that for you too. 
Notice how the Canaanite woman doesn't treat Jesus as a healing, dispensing machine, but she realizes that if there's going to be any hope for salvation for her daughter, for release from the demon oppression, that she herself, as her, as her mother, she must confess her sins too. And Jesus surprises the undeserving. He gives her crumbs, which in our minds might not do much. It seems from crumbs, you can't live off of them. I mean, when you think about the small things in this life, no small amount of money can satisfy a great debt. No small amount of love will sustain a marriage. No small amount of commitment and a friendship will be able to withstand trials and frustrations and anger. How can God use small things to help those who are undeserving? But when Jesus gives this woman crumbs, he calls her faith great. A small little crumb causes her to have great faith, and God recognizes that in her. How can God take such small things to save such undeserving people as you and as I and as the Canaanite woman and her demon-possessed daughter? Well, here's how he takes small things. He takes, in baptism, tiny drops of water, maybe just one or two that may hit the head of a child or an adult, and he takes his powerful word and he does a great work when he gives great faith to someone so small and so tiny, to an adult who feels so small and so tiny, squashed down by the world, and God brings greatness to them. In the Lord's Supper, there's just a tiny piece of bread, a small cup of wine that is taken, and yet a great Thing is done when he heals the weary souls of those who have been burdened by discouragement and wonder if God is going to answer them a word at all. And he says in this a word for you. He says, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. God deals with you to show you that in prayer the Holy Spirit comes and attends to your prayers that you wonder if God is going to ever give an answer. And when you have nothing left to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf, prays for you, and calls out to God in words that we ourselves cannot understand or explain. And the church itself the church itself acts in surprise to us because now we do not act as though the disciples did when we have someone in our midst who is beaten down and crushed by the world, when we have someone who is outside of God's grace and mercy, we do not act as the disciples did and cast them off, send them away because we can't handle They're calling out to God, whether it be in anger or frustration, in disappointment or in despair. No, we bring it to God. And we surprise them with lives of mercy. Because we have had God's mercy in our own life. Men and women of the church now get on their hands and knees and bow together before God in Jesus Christ and worship him so that all others might see how undeserving we truly are and yet how surprising his mercy always is. You know, it's no surprise that God promised that this would happen. But maybe you don't realize that these words are written for you and for me. 
and for all those who realize how truly undeserving they are of God's love. But God, in our Old Testament reading, spoke such words when he said, And the foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. So whether a prayer goes answered or unanswered, this place is a house of joy for all people. And Jesus may bring healing for those who you have on your heart and on your mind. But you may be surprised by the joy of God's mercy that he also has saved you and wants to save you and the one for whom we pray. And I'm surprised that God has brought me and you to joy together in this house of prayer today. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious King, we praise you as the creator and sustainer of life. Grant peace for all mothers and those who are expecting, for those who struggle to conceive or are barren. For those who are far from the womb and nearer to the tomb, grant courage to face trial and suffering in their last days, as you have always created and sustained life. Lord, in your mercy. Saving King, we praise you as the Savior of the Redeemer of life. Your nail-scarred hands and pierced side give evidence of the lengths to which you have journeyed in order to seek and to save the lost. As they are made right with you by the shedding of your innocent blood, we are recipients of what we could have never earned nor deserve. United as one, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, we praise you as the restorer and renewer of life. You claim your family through the outpouring of mercy that we experience in holy baptism. You enable our hearts to receive your word and our mouths to confess your truth before an unbelieving world. United as one, we praise you, Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign King, you see all things in heaven and on earth. Nothing is outside your watch and reign. So bless our families, our workplace, our schools, and our church. Sustain the life of our community and guide the leaders who labor among us for the blessing of all. Protect those in harm's way, especially the members of our military, that they may rest in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Healing King, you stooped down from your heavenly throne to dwell among us in Christ. As you continue to bind up the brokenhearted and heal their wounds, we pray for all who are sick and suffering in any way, especially for Donna Cruz as she anticipates surgery, for Brian Lips, Paul Silver, Darlene Wahlberg, Luca Hausman, Larry Lobitz, Eric Christians, Ron Lewison, Neil Holton, Bob Taylor, Mark Knack, Johnny Cordiva, Bill Betterman, Addie Mork, Evelyn Bulky, Mark Peterson, Judy Shorter, Spencer Thorsland, Michelle Wren, Jane Close, Paul and Naomi During, Ron Rogers, Mike Neeland. And we give you thanks for the healing of Gus Burninghouse and for Mary and her surgery. Help these and all others whom we name in our hearts to know the love you have for all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may be seated as we collect our tithes and our offerings. Light of the world, you step down into darkness.
Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance will be revealed. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Spread the Reign of God the Lord. Uh, just a few announcements. As you can tell, the, the slides uh, up here will be going on during announcements uh, from here on out just to keep them rolling so we can kind of uh, improve how much we talk about announcements and how little we talk about announcements. We love hearing about things that are going on, uh, but um, if uh, you, you have something going on that you would like to have noticed, uh, please let Deb know that we can, so that we can put them up on these rolling announcements. They will be from here on out after sir going on before service when you come uh to worship next week and then after service they will be uh rolling uh so that we can have a few other announcements noticed uh just a heads up that sunday school teachers um we are looking for some help with sunday school teachers as we prepare for that to start on september 10th uh there's a worship uh or worship sign up sheet um, uh, next to the library window, the lounge window, when you exit the sanctuary to the left. Also, a uh, fellowship uh, team has a short meeting Monday at 5 p.m. for the PokeFest planning, uh, so take note of that. Uh, if you have a deadline for the newsletter, um, if you have something to put in the newsletter, please let, give it to Deb by Wednesday. Uh, also, uh, next Sunday, we'll have new member welcome. Uh, so uh, we'll be welcoming a couple of new families into uh, our family here at Good Shepherd. So we're very excited about that. Are there any other announcements uh, that we have missed this morning? All right. With that, uh, go in peace, serve the Lord, and have a great day.